to blow in the sky, but none of the large, old, experienced stars would give a place to blow near them. I'm sorry. You're just not big enough yet. Look at how small you are. Go on now. Run along. Maybe someday you'll be big and strong like me. The beautiful stars would say things. I'm sorry. Never right. How beautiful. Now go on. Find a place to blow. Maybe someday it'll be as bright in people's eyes. Then you can go over here, perhaps. So the little stars will go over the heavens looking for a place to blow. But very few find them. And most of them ended up searching endlessly, or maybe glowing in the dark, forgotten corner of the universe where no one would see them. 
But all of that changed when little star named Twinkle was born. And he was so small that all the older stars just called him Twinkle Little. And Twinkle Little went looking for a place to glow in the sky. Um, sorry, Twinkle Little, look at you. Look how small you are. You're just not big enough yet. <laughs> I've been glowing here for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, but now go on, find somewhere else to glow. Twinkle Little, never grow. If you glow with us, our constellation would not have seven stars anymore. Instead, we have seven and a half, and I'm afraid that's just not right. Go on, Twinkle Little, go find places like that. Ah, Twinkle Little and all the stars. He was so discouraged and went home at the end of the night. He was ready to go to sleep because everyone knows stars sleep during the daytime and they wake up only at night. And so all day he tossed and turned in his bed, wishing there was some place for him to go. Finally he thought to himself, maybe if I impress the older stars enough, they'll give me a place to go with them. So the next night he went out and said, Hey, hey, guess what I am? Guess what I am? Ready? Pshew. He pretended to shoot a bow and arrow across the sky. And all of the bigger, older stars would say, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. That was a shooting star. Guess what I missed that? Oh no. star as well. That sounds just like me. Oh no. Then they read the fine print. Um, perhaps someone else. They passed it along. The beautiful stars read the description. Well, God needs an experienced star and a beautiful star as well. It sounds just like me. But then the fine print. Oh, um, perhaps someone else. So all around the sky, the job description was passed. Twinkle Little heard about it and thought to himself, Oh, I'm not very big, I'm not very old, I'm not too experienced, and I'm not even too bright. But, but maybe God can use me after all. I think I'll go apply for the job. Well, the night when God was going to see all of the applicants for the job description, Twinkle Little showed up. Well, he expected a thousand other stars to be lined up in front of all the big, the strong, the bright stars, but instead he was the only one who came. He walked all the way up to God's throne in the center of the palace in the middle of the sky. He bowed down before God Almighty. Oh, your majesty, he said. I've come to apply for the job. Oh, don't go with him, said God. I'm so glad you came. Um, have you heard about the job? Do you know what it's all about? Not really. You see, far away in a little planet named Earth, I'm sending my son. He's going to be born, and I need a star to shine in the sky so brightly oh, that anyone who wants to find my son can find me. Where should he be? Point people to your son? Oh, I'd be honored, Your Majesty. But, um, but, Twinkle Little, have you heard about the fine print? <laughs> no? What does it say? Yes, well. See, Twinkle Little, the thing is, whatever star I choose has to shine so brightly that, uh, well, it's going to burn out. Now, all the stars feared the day they knew it was gone. Uh, even if they'd been glowing for thousands and thousands of years, they knew that one day their light would fade and dim and then go out. And probably very few people would even notice. So they put off thinking about it. When they read the fine print, they passed it along, but Twinkle Little didn't care. Instead, he said, Your Majesty, as long as I can serve you, that's all that matters. Oh, Twinkle Little, I'm 
was hoping he'd say that. Uh, he picked up Twinkle. He put him in a very special corner of the sky, and immediately Twinkle Little began to glow with all of his strength and brightness, and the other stars went by, the older stars. And Twinkle Little better slow down there. Uh, you're going to burn yourself out. Twinkle Little, <laughs> pace yourself. Look at me. Then, then you can glow for a long, long time. But Twinkle Little didn't listen, and he didn't care. He had a job to do. He glowed with all of his strength and far away on the little planet called Earth. If you can know it. And they knew something very special was about to happen. They followed through the little's life and then he came to the child. They laid down and gave the spit for King and they bowed before him. And then as they left, one of them lines back to the sky. Hey, uh, hey, hey, you guys remember that star we saw the way over here? Yeah, they said. Well, look, it's, uh, it's not there anymore. They all gazed up toward the sky, indeed. There was only darkness where Twinkle Little's life had been. Hmm. Uh, I guess it's burned out, they said. Uh, just glad it showed up when it did, said one of the men, and began to follow the train toward home. But, oh, if only, if only they could have been up in the sky. If only they could have been there as Twinkle Little's last few glimmers of light were fading out. Because they would have seen what a big smile was on his face. Ah, uh, even though Twinkle Little had not lived a long life, he was happy because he had spent all his strength and his life pointing people to the king's own son.
Well, let's give him one more hand, guys.